Hey, Crystal, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron. How are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, just looking for this um, the combination of technical and business session. And, uh, but <laughs> we just talked about it. We promised uh, it is not going to be too technical, but uh, some basic knowledge about uh, data management, data science, uh, basically your profession. Can you give us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So I um so I, I call myself as a data man, right? So data man in a in a way because that uh well better to say data woman, right? Uh, but it's in a way that my whole career journey is also really related to the data. So I start studying um statistics uh when I was in in university. Um and also um going through this journey, I also work in um different bands like on the analytics. Um, data warehousing and also the data management space. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long journey. It's like uh, all this, my career is actually touching um, different set of the data, um, including uh, some of the data in the retail banking side and also the, the data in the corporate banking side. So right now my role is actually covering um, this overall data end to end, including um, mm -hmm. the data governance, the data analytics, the BR reporting, the data platform as well in the insurance company. So um, that's that's where I am right now. So um, yeah, going to answer some of your interesting data question. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it sounds some, uh, somewhat complicated already. <laughs> Can you give us a, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the big picture? What is, first off, what is data science and what is data engineering? Because that is something that's uh, always confused me, uh, even when I was a programmer and even the product manager and then later I figured it out, but can you help us to understand that and what is the relationship between them? Yeah, so, um, so, so data sciences, like the, uh, the simple idea is actually they are using the analytics models, like they're trying to identify the insights from the data. Mm -hmm. uh, while for the data engineer, you, you, you can think of like a, a a set of the people helping you to build that platform and then to collect the data, distribute the data to allow everybody can use it easily, right? So obviously um, some, some, some of the role, what happened is like quite a lot of the data scientists actually doing some data engineers role and some data engineer also you doing some data scientists role. So mm -hmm. that's why it makes you so confused that sometimes that happens, right? Because the organization and these two types of the role is quite new to um, I would say to the market, um, still mm. quite new, right? So, so that's one of the reason why you have a, some uh, mixture of it. But ultimately, the data scientist is more like a front end person, like to make sure that through the data they can identify the insights, while the engineer will be the back end side that helping on setting all this up, which is very important um, mm -hmm. to have them both in the organizations. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, you already answered. Uh, the question that I'm going to ask next, because basically my next question is, uh, what is data scientist and what is data engineer? So you might understand to your previous answer is basically uh, data scientist is more uh, on to the visualization parts or more on the front end. And data engineer is more uh, building the back end to um, feed the data to the front end. But um, so, okay. Let's skip my second question. Uh, I would like to know some technical components uh, because some of my audience, they are not technical. So uh, it's, uh, this question may sound so stupid to you, but what is the database? Please also briefly talk about what relational and non visual database are and the low level knowledge a little bit, just a little bit like schema, table, document, those kind of things. Yeah, so so database is actually um, is is a storage, right, to store all the data that the the people that the people normally use or the organization normally use, right. So when you're talking about relational and non-relational, um, I would better to say majority of the um, in at the organization internal we call it a relational database. They actually a, a structured database with the table, with the rows, like all this kind of the information, right. Put it a very, very structured way. That is like our usual, like, I mean, long time ago building have that kind of um, database, right? While the long relational, I would say it is more like 
uh, it's talking about like this 20 years, right? Um, it's like, it's about the big data. So it's just no, um, no that structure. All right. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a way to make it like very scalable to store a, a set of the data that is not structured. So that including some of the video data, voice data, um, test data, like all this kind of information stored in that database. So within the organization, we actually require both because um, it's actually um, right now, right? Because previously, um, the organization normally only store the uh, relational database because um, internal system, they are always storing this type of the data, right? But we still having some set of the um, uh, unstructured data, like the test data, right? Because when we uh, storing our data, sometimes we'll restore, store some of the remarks, right? But mm. majority of the time when we doing the analytics, we don't, we don't like to look at those remarks because we, we, it is difficult to, to analyze. analyze. Um, uh. and when I'm talking about like when I start doing the analytics, it's like talking about 20 years ago, no one really liked doing this remarks analytics, right? But now, um, a lot of people actually will require to dig in on this kind of the information. And it's actually quite large amount of the data that um, that we need to store, right? So, so even like the voice data, the image data, that everybody's want to look into that to see if there's any insights in there as well. So that's the reason why um, I would say within right now, like the organization must store both um, to make sure that they can join up the data that they need. Yeah. Thank you very much. Basically, you read my mind and provide a lot of uh, different examples to illustrate the difference between them and the reason why we need both of them, uh, just uh, within only one organization. Uh, so let's stop. I would like to ask how many common technical components for data with, uh, within a financial organization? Uh, and uh, is this something like data source and pipelines from external parties, data lake, data warehouse? machine learning layer and the latest layer. Do I miss any or yeah, just can you give us an overview of it? Okay, so I, I would better to say, right? So when we're talking about the, um, the data, um, if, you, if you look into the whole journey of the data, it's like it's actually starting from the data sourcing, data ingestion, data consolidation, data usage and data distribution. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the key full journey on how we gathering the data and then start using the data as all this, right? So in terms of like the data sourcing part, the components including um as we just talking about the relation relational database and also long relational database, the reason on that is because that um we have a, some internal uh, structured data. We have some external structured data, but we also have internal and external unstructured data, right? Mm -hmm. So the data sourcing part is actually how we're gonna to gather all these um, data is coming from different area, right? Different database, and then the next one will be the data injection, which is which is um, this is really important because um, the frequency, like the how quickly that you can inject the data into a a, a places. Uh, and then to allow you to use it is actually a very, very, um, uh, I would say it's a, it's a topic that we're always talking about mm. right now because because the ch any changes in the at, the at the source, then that means like how we're gonna to change it in our in our injection part mm. is also mm. very, very important like to understand how this how these things work. So that's quite a lot of technical um, components that actually talking about like the ETL, ELT, um, all this kind type of the stuff then Kafka like this kind of the technology using to um, uh, sourcing the data inject the data from 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 the source to the, the to the data consolidation platform. Mm. Then when we're talking about the data consolidation is definitely in terms of the data modeling and how this um, structure our data right. So even though the unstructured data we are talking about. Um, ultimately, when we do the analytics, we will still need to turn the unstructured data to the structured data, right? Yeah. Voice to test, test to really like table and rows data so that when you using the um, algorithm, then you know how to analyze the data using all this, right? Because ultimately, even though you do a lot of analytics, you, you still need to explain all this, right? So you can't just say, oh, I'm doing something and it's some, something happens, right? But how can you gonna to explain all this logics in behind that is important, right? So that's the reason why 
um, the consolidation part is actually in, include a lot of component on how to modelize the data, how I can use the AI technology to turn the unstructured data to structured data, right? And then and then the next one will be as what you mentioned, like the machine learning and also the yes. analytics AI capabilities, right? On the tooling side, on how we're gonna to use different tools um, to analyze our data, to model our data. And the data distribution part will be the API components or how we're going to send the data outside the data platform or the, the data source area to allow us like to, to fit in the insights back to our digital platform or maybe other front end platform as well. So this is how these uh, whole mm. journey components like going to join up. Yeah. Mm, perfect. Uh, all of the things that you talk about, uh, not, not all of this, perhaps seven to 80% that uh, the things that you just talked about, uh, they are invisible to the end user. Uh, is there any example feature, um, perhaps uh, in the BI world or in the um, financial organization or not in financial organization, just um, some feasible feature that the end user can see? Uh, is there an example that you can talk about um, so, okay, so I, okay, so I, maybe, maybe, maybe I use one example mm -hmm. on how it gonna to visualize all this, right? So, um, I take like process mining as example, right? So, mm -hmm. so process mining is actually a set of the, um, capabilities on how we gonna to do some diagnostic analysis, right? Mm -hmm. So. So I think I think that may be quite interesting for if it's actually for not just one not for the financial institution but every company right so every company having an operation side yes. of the world right um, but always that we were talking about how we're gonna to uh, um, make our operational process more efficient right there's a lot of discussion around that right but obviously how we're gonna to analyze that is actually we will we will need to understand the end-to-end -end process, right? Mm -hmm. So when we capturing the data from the source system, um, from the person who input the data into the system, right? The time, the timestamp they input this in, what types of the transaction, how many times they 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 done it um in a in, in a way. So this is this is how we're gonna to capture all this. Um I would say log God. logging the transactions information mm -hmm. in there, right? And then through, and then we, if you have those, right, then of course that is a sitting in different system, right? It's normally mm -hmm. when you're doing all this processing, it's not only just using one system. If you're just using one system, I think you're, you're living in a very ideal world. <laughs> <And I think laughs> that's, 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 you're always as an operation person, like you will have to put in the data into multiple systems, right? <laughs> so, so that consolidation is actually, you, you, you having all this loss coming from the different system, then you mm -hmm. consolidate them into a platform. Then you can, you can base on all this linkage between the process, then you can see, okay, how are we gonna to link up the, the, the process? By properly using an identifier or, or whatever is that that sitting in the system, then we can join up the information. Mm -hmm. Then you can put up like the whole end-to-end -end process, right? And then through this whole end-to-end -end process, then you can see, okay, so for, for one process, mm -hmm. um, how long that it was gonna to take, right? So that that information you can capture from your data, right? Mm -hmm. And then that will be able to be a to be visualized in a dashboard stuff, right? Then you can see, okay, so for this whole end-to-end -end process, um, for specifically like maybe for this incident, how mm -hmm. how long that I will gonna to take, right? Are we increasing the the are we increasing the time or we are we are we are um are reducing the times to doing all these exercises? Then we can do the some investigation. Well, well, by the way, why this 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 process is keep increasing the time? Mm. What's the problem on that? That actually you can really visualize like doing through your your BI tools on this, right? So this type of the stuff that you can use um by using your data from from sourcing it from the multiple multiple source, consolidating and visualizing it, then um, it is it is very very powerful um, ways that to use your data and then also visualize it, monitoring your your process. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's advance the level of the technical art a little bit you know, to data privacy and security. Uh, mm, 
how do financial interest, uh, institution, um, maybe not just financial institution, but the reason why I keep saying financial institution is uh, they always, uh, the uh, data privacy is, is uh, always a uh, high, high, very highly concerned. But uh, basically in other organizations, like uh, when I was a programmer in a newspaper company, uh, mm -hmm. those kind of uh, user data is all is also very highly concerned. I still remember mm -hmm. that I, I have an experience that I, ju I was just focused, very focusing on developing the front end to visualize the data. And then I just carelessly to expose the backend data and make it a public uh, endpoint even though no one know that endpoint, no one would do such a stupid thing. But if you really know that, you can see a list of uh, <laughs> end user uh, information. So my question is, uh, how do these kind of big enterprise uh, handle data privacy and security security issue in the non blockchain world? Are there are there any technical skills involved other than encryption or yeah, can you talk about it? Yeah, sure. Um, it's actually, I would say, um, you can imagine the data privacy and security is actually very big topic um, yeah. in, in the whole data management um, world, right? Um, the reason on that because of the complexity, right? Obviously, it really depends on um, your organization setup. So I used to work in a multinational um, bank, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then they have like a 50 something countries coverage, right? And for wow. each country, they have a different regulatory requirement um, on, on, on the data privacy and data security. So imagine, <laughs> right? Um, so if you're just looking into to, to, um, to Asia, right? China regulation compares to um, Indonesia, compared to Hong Kong, compared to Singapore, they are all very different, right? So they have mm. a different requirements on all these things, right? So, so, so that's why I'm saying like, if you are a multinational company, um, the, the concerns that you actually have is a much larger than just, I'm saying like using a tool, whatever it is, right? So, so basically, how we're gonna to do with it is, a, is actually we will require to understand for each country, what is the regulatory requirements look like? What's the local law that they have? And, um, and also apart from that, we are also required to look into some global components in there. Like for example, the GDPR, right? Um, wow. Is this actually not applied for just Europe country? If we have a European uh, customers, then we will also need to apply the same. Right. Oh. So, <laughs> so you see, like the complexity is a is some global types of the um the, the requirements plus the local uh, country requirements, right? Combined together and set up a set of the rules on how we're gonna to deal with it. So that's why um for a, a large company, the complexity on that is a to set to set up the framework and what mm. control we need we need to put it in place, right? And then, and then once that we set it up, it's actually how we're gonna to apply this whole set of the rules and also um, the, the understanding into our data world, right? So I used to work in, in the bank that actually we are, we are collecting a lot of that information from like 50, 50 something countries. And then we consolidate them into a platform. And then we turn those, those information into um, a rules, a set of the rules, and also mm. tagging the data related to that rules and applying into our data platform, which is a, a very, very complicated process. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine, right? Uh. Because ultimately, um, um, we, it is really, as what you mentioned, right? It is really uh. powerful if you will be able to understand um, our customer globally. Right, and especially when you're talking about the uh, anti-money laundering, the financial crime risk, um, this type of the information for a bank or for for a financial institution is very important, right? Because um, the it is the financial crime risk actually link up. A, we we need to link up a lot of information of our customer to ensure that uh, we know our footprint of our customers where they are, oh. if they're doing anything um, in the other countries, that we should not allow that uh, customer doing the same into the countries, right? It's more like to protect 
um, yeah. our our world, our society, our community to make sure that um, something bad not happens to to our community, right? So this type of the style as a band, we have the obligations to make sure yes. that happens. And this is the reason why that we need a lot of this collection combined together, right? And of course, that is a lot of commercialization components in there. But in, if you're going down to that path, that's definitely another set of the story, right? Using uh, it for the factor for the risk management, I think uh, um, majority yeah. of the country will are uh, quite okay with it, right? Nothing like okay, but it's more like mm. you're more willing to accept this is required, right? But if you're talking about the commercialization, everybody will be um, will put a little bit a uh, political reason on uh, why <laughs> you have to touch my my side, right? That kind of <laughs> stuff that happens as well. Mm. So that's why I'm saying like when we're talking about the the privacy security, it's actually mm. not just about the tooling itself, right? The tooling is just the easiest part, I would say. <laughs> the most difficult part is like to understand all these um, regulatory law components and how we're going to apply into the data and then apply this um, into our world when we're doing the analytics mm. and all this, yeah. Oh, wow. It is just too amazing to talk to you, uh, especially from the technical people uh, perspective, because um, Sometimes I'm not saying the telecom part is, is easy or simple, but the uh, most telecom part it is the uh, things that outside of the organization, like the political uh, um, issue and those kind of things, it is not binary. And sometimes it is uh, maybe even fake, and uh, um, but you still have to ingest those kind of data into the organization and you have to massage it into a, an ambiguous way. So uh, yeah, you just expand the mind of a telecom people. Because you are such a professional in terms of not, data, not just data management, but also data governance, can you explain what data governance is from both macro and micro level yeah sure sure so um i would say i spent quite a lot of time on this um data management mm. data governance space so data governance is actually part of the is a really core cool components on the data management right mm. and of course that it will combine with the other like data quality um metadata management orders right um but the key things on the data governance right um I would say it, it is a framework, right? It's a discipline like, on how we're gonna to, um, make sure that our data is in, in a good high quality into the organization, how we're gonna to manage it, right? All these things that is, is through this governance. A lot of people think about the um, data governance is a, a such boring topics, right? And also when people bring in the data governance, they will normally, oh, because this is, um, they, this these things have a data quality issue, this data is shit. So that's why I left the data governance to deal with it. But what does it mean that black box of the data governance, <laughs> right? It's, everybody is like, make it very simple, right? Some people make it even simpler. It's like, oh, if you're applying the data governance, it means like you have to identify something called critical data elements and you measure the quality, you know, that is the things that you need to do. I, I wanted to say if someone's telling you something like that is actually very, very primitive person to understand what the data governance means. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the data governance is actually require a lot of practical application, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually, it has to be embedded into your business, into the business process, right? Mm -hmm. If an organization done really well, the data governance should be already embed into their business and you don't mm. need a separate teams doing anything related to the data governance. Remember, the data governance is a discipline on how we are gonna to maintain, store and collect our data, good quality data, right? Mm. That actually supposedly should, should be done by the business through the business process, through the peoples, right? In the organization, okay? Mm. Um, 
it's not it's not rocket science, right? So of course that you have some discipline, say for example, uh, if you input the, the date of birth, like this type of the information, it has to follow the date format, right? That type of stuff. When you input the data, you have to double check the documentation, make sure that um, the data that you, you copying in is correct, or you just, right now it's a lot better, right? Because you have an OCR that you can scan certain stuff and then, you know, you can, quickly using the AI can populate all this information in. But even though like that, um, the population is not 100%, you still need to, you need, mm. you still need some manual human uh, interventions in there if there's uh, something wrong in there, right? So that is something that um, the business will need to do, right? Mm. So that's why I'm saying like, when we when we talking about the data governance, it's a, it's a, what we can do like in the organization, then we can, make sure that our, our, our data is in a good quality, maintained in a good quality, capture at the upfront, maintain it well, and also be allow the people understand how good the quality that we have, right? And again, when I'm saying like the good quality, I'm not saying like all the single data we will require in a very, very good quality, right? Because it's not that easy, right? Mm -hmm. And also we will need a lot of money to make it good right, it, mm -hmm. it really, really good, right? Obviously for an organization, they need to define what types of the data that they think is very important. They have to make it super accurate, right? 100% zero tolerance, that type of information. Um, an organization needs to define it. And then once that they define it, they also need to apply it into their business process, right? So this is really what, uh, what the organization using the data governance should do, right? Rather than you were thinking, oh, I should have a authority, I should have a uh, uh, top-down team mm -hmm. like, to make sure everybody doing the right thing. It's not the case, right? Mm -hmm. It is actually how you change the people mindset and then get the people understand how, how this thing should work. And then what's the consequence if I don't keep the data as well? Right. Mm. This is really what the, go the, the data governance concept should mean, right? It should be much, much far away from the people always thinking, oh, this is an authority. It's not, it's definitely not that the case, uh. right? So that's, that's the reason why I want, I really want to share that because I work in mm. this um, space like for quite a long time, almost like I would say like more than 10 years, right? And I see a lot of people using very uh, theoretical way to run this data governance. Um, but actually, there's a lot of uh, practical uh, application we need when we're applying the data governance, right? So, so don't fall into um, uh, checking the website and just applying the framework. <laughs> but it's actually, it's a required like a lot of thinking on how we're going to apply this practically in our business process. Why are these people have this kind of misconception at the first place? Um, is it, it is because that um, it's funny, right? I, I would say it's more um, psychological thinking, right? When, mm. Especially when people are using the governance work, mm. right? Then the people think, okay, so it's a governance. So that means I, I got a, um, someone have the authority um, to tell us what mm. need to do. And of course the people are lazy, right? So normally, <laughs> I'm doing the operation, I'm lazy, right? So I need someone to tell me what I need to do as well, right? It, it would be perfect if it is the case, right? But if, if an organization run well, okay, mm. everyone have the responsibility to manage the data that they actually um, input into the organization ecosystem, right? So that requires a culture change. So that's why I'm saying mm. like the data governance is not just about uh, applying the framework, applying certain stuff, but it's about like to how you change the people's mindset and get the people understand how these things should work, right? And then they can apply it into their day-to-day -day work. Got it. Basically, you, uh, uh, it is not just a sign or it is a cultural thing uh, about the mindset psychological because uh, mm, every single one has to care about it within their organization and uh, we have to change it. That's very good. Uh, perhaps uh, to wrap up this session, uh, I would like to ask you this question. Because uh, blockchain is such a hype right now, do you think the technology of blockchain can help resolve the data governance issue? Why or why not? Um, I would say yes or no in a certain way. Right? Um, 
the concept of the bot train is about the immutable uh, ledger, right? It's the key, the key components in there, right? Um, it's basically locked into, okay, so if I input that information in, um, in a timeline, then I'm not going to change anything on this, right? Um, for a certain type of the data, mm. yes, right, but not everything, mm. right? So, um, so if if I'm just literally apply this blockchain technology to 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 this whole data world, I mm. would say it will be massive and also it will be highly inefficient. Mm. That's the, okay. yeah, that's yes. the answer. But if, you, if you're more focusing on like Bitcoin, that types of the currency, mm. right? It, it's fine, right? So so because because this is only using a, a small set of the data, it's like trying to throw in around, right? And then we mm. apply that disciplines in, then definitely it will be much easier and faster, right? Mm. But for, for that, you, if you're applying the whole world of the data, mm. that will definitely be uh, quite yeah. massive, yeah. Hmm. Thank you very much. That's the answer I really want to hear because uh, sometimes <laughs> it is like uh, uh, in the uh, early 90s or early 2000s and whenever you talk about dot com and then it becomes a magic wand, it can, <laughs> it can be solved everything. Blockchain it, it is not the magic wand, it is just a tool that we can deploy to some area if it is applicable to your use case. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there anything that the uh, last message you want to share with my audiences? Uh, yeah, look, look so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so as I explained myself, it's, um, it's not a very technical person, right? So, um, but I do, I do believe as a, um, as, a, as a running an organization or running a business, um, when you're talking about the data, I think the first thing is not about using the dragon, using the, just telling me like, what's the AI, like all this kind of stuff, right? Before you think about this, think about like, what, what's the problems that you have? What's the problem you want to resolve? What things that you want to do? What is the business initiative, right? And using, using and try, and, and you can using like different ways to applying it, right? So don't, don't always like putting, oh, I, because I'm, I'm doing it, someone telling me that I, I should use this too, someone telling me I should use te this technology. So that's why the people always thinking like, oh, how are we gonna to apply this technology, right? Instead, they should think about like, what's your problem first? And then pick like whatever the technology can help you to resolve your problem. Right, mm -hmm. so you're not you're not be the you will not be the the um slaver the slave of the technology. You should drive mm -hmm. the technology. The technology enable you to do your own stuff, right? So I think this is the the key things that I want to say because when we fall into that um data analytics technical world that the people always are oh this is the things that i want to do like this is the this is really cool right especially when you're talking about the blockchain like everybody's oh this is really cool technology yes mm. the technology is cool oh, but what yeah. is your business case why why do you need that right <laughs> you're definitely not right so this mm. type of the stuff that we need to think about um before mm. we apply any um technology or even like the concepts in the in in that yeah very great answer. We appreciate it. It is uh, uh, the first episode in terms of data governance uh, in our podcast series, and it is a very good one. Thank you very much, Crystal. Thank you, Ariane. I will talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Yep.